Hello, I'm Dr. Goran Stanković, international cardiologist from Belgrade, Serbia, and welcome to case-based left main session about contemporary percutaneous revascularization. It's great privilege and honor to discuss this challenging lesion subset with my colleague and friend, Professor Francesco Burzotta from Rome, Italy. Here on this slide, you can see our conflicts of interest. Why left main bifurcation is different? Because left main has some specific anatomical characteristics like T-shape angulation with angle being around 80 degrees on the average. Then we have discrepancy in the caliber because left main proximal vessel is always large. And then we have step down in diameter when we go into the LAD or the circumflex. So because of caliber discrepancy, we have technical challenges imposed. Left main bifurcation area is also area prone to calcium deposition. So we frequently have bifurcation of the left main, which is calcified. And in case that ostium of the left main is involved, we have a lot of fibrotic tissue and take into account also challenges of treating that fibrotic area plus contact between guiding catheter and the stand increases procedural complexity. In addition, side branch is not small, side branch is circumflex, and according to flow simulation and computer tomography, we know that in 95% of cases, circumflex supplies with blood, eight, more than 10% of myocardium of the left ventricle, which means it's almost always clinically relevant. And what we learn from computer tomography is also that oval shape and angle shape of the ostium of the left main has significant impact on procedural strategy. Left main is also large vessel, around five millimeter, so it demands specific skills by the operator, but also requires adequately sized devices and devices with adequate expansion capacity. So if you look this cartoon with the mean diameter of the left main between four and six millimeters, and having in mind that 10% of left main cases are trifurcations, when we do percutaneous procedure, if we size the vessel according to LA, we have gross under expansion that we need to take care of during the PCI. So PCI in the left main is a challenging procedure. And I would like to ask Francesco, what is the current evidence base after the Excel study results? So the, um... The evidence are, have been accumulating during these years, but there was a really a lot of discussion into the uh, scientific community after the communication of the uh, last analysis from Excel trial, which compared PCI with cabbage on unprotected left main, and the five years primary endpoints have been disclosed. So after our first phase, in which uh, there was uh, a, a trend toward equipose for uh, PCI, there was uh, uh, the, the signal for possible hazard to the later follow-up. However, uh, I think that uh, what is important is to put uh, the results of the Excel in the broad context of accumulated data so far, and we have uh, the first uh, uh, trials, uh, which is the syntax trial, large trial in the field, the results in which uh, the 10 years follow-up data have been disclosed. And when you look at the left main subgroup, which was uh, a predefined subgroup, you may see that uh, the clinical outcomes are in terms of mortality comparable and uh, the risk uh, possible increased risk with PCI is mainly confined to those patients with more complex uh, uh, coronary anatomy as assessed by Sinta score. And uh, uh, why we have also a, a re very recent meta-analysis in which uh, the tri-PCI in cabbage have been pulled 
with the, uh, the uh, longer clinical outcome data collected, which are in the most of the cases more than five years, uh, and the uh, mortality rates have been found to be comparable between PCI and cabbage, and the strong signal uh, in favor of cabbage is uh, in terms of uh, reduced unplanned revascularization. So uh, putting it uh, uh, into the, the context of uh, clinical practice, uh, there was uh, uh, inside the EBC a very uh, uh, conservative and uh, uh, tailored approach. So in the case of significant left main bifurcation disease deserving myocardial revascularization, it is very important to uh, remember the fact that if the patient is unstable, uh, coronary surgery is often not a good option and urgent PCI should. In the case of stable, but also stabilized patients, it's very important to remember the fact that all these data in favor of PCI, supporting PCI performance, have been performed on top of our team discussion. So it is very important to offer patients a team approach. And you have the two options that should be tailored for the patient, cabbage or PCI. And when you select PCI, it is also very important that you select an experienced team and appropriately equipped PCI team. Why? Because technique is all always important in this kind of procedures. Don't you think this, uh, Goran? Uh, yes, Francesco, I completely agree. And this is the summary of our recommendation in the latest consensus document from European Bifurcation Club. Actually, you were the leading author of this consensus. And we concluded based on this, in left main disease involving both branches, Stenting technique should depend on individual patient's anatomical characteristics and the operator skill. But we still believe that provisional strategy may be effective. And actually we provide an algorithm which is based on the estimated risk of losing the side branch. So in case that we don't expect high risk of losing the side branch, we believe that provisional strategy should be initial strategy and after stenting from the left main crossover into the LAD, then we do port, distal rewiring, main branch dilatation, and we finalize procedure either with T-stenting, top stenting, or the cool off. However, in case that we have major concern regarding the side branch losing, we can do either double kissing crush based on DK crush five results, or we can start procedure with inverted provisional, which means stenting from the main vessel, from the left main, into the side branch, most frequently into the circumflex. And then we do pot, distal dewiring, dilatation, and then we do inverted culotte, inverted T, or inverted TAP. We will have much more data after the study, EBC main, study organized by European Bifurcation Club, which compares one versus two stand strategy in true left main bifurcation lesions. We are planning 450 patients with true distal left main bifurcation and with large vessels. We want circumflex and LAD both to be more than 275. And then we compare provisional single stand strategy versus two stand strategy. To say that clinical endpoint is one year, uh, cumulative myocardial infarction, mortality, and target lesion revascularization. And it's pleasure to say that recruitment for this study is completed in December 2019. Here you can see the centers and congratulations to leading centers from UK. And we hope to see results very soon, maybe the beginning of the next year. So, Francesco, can you please share with us one of the examples from this study? Yes, uh, for sure. I mean, we have been involved in the study, and this is a, a typical patient in uh, enrolled. You see that this that she was a lady, 81 years old, with severe obesity, and uh, uh, previous stent on uh, obtuse marginal and non-ST elevation MI. The right coronary artery was non-dominant, and the main lesion was distal left main lesion into the caudal view uh, 
seems to be mainly confined to LAD toward the um, left lane, but uh, in the cranial view, you clearly see that there is uh, uh, involvement with this haziness into the um, ostium of the circumflex. So uh, this patient has been randomized to uh, provisional. Uh, in, uh, in doing uh, this, uh, we uh, performed the NOCT guided PCI by right radial with the slender uh, introducer, six French. And uh, the uh, pre-PCI evaluation was done, uh, as I mentioned, by OCT, confirmed the fact that there was tight disease into the distal left main immediately before the bifurcation. But as you may appreciate by the three-dimensional lumen reconstruction, you may see that there is complex disease uh, into the old bifurcation area, but still circumflex ostium is not so tightly stenosed. So in this situation, it makes sense to safely go on with the provisional according to the protocol. And what we did was to predilate uh, with a non-compliant balloon 3.5 uh, the, uh, the main axis toward the LAD. Then we implanted uh, an onyx 4.5 by uh, 22 millimeters uh, drug gluten stent. Since we recognized that uh, the um, vessel was a, a little bit smaller than 4.5, we implanted it in low atmospheres. And uh, then we performed uh, the expansion of the proximal uh, uh, part of uh, the stent, which is the left main, with the appropriately sized uh, POT balloon 5 by 20, uh, 12 millimeters. After that, uh, really to care at the circumflex rewiring. To do this, we selected the workhorse wire, but we appropriately banded it. We looked for the uh, best incidents, which surprisingly here was in the cranial view. And uh, we performed the pullback rewiring, entering into the distality of uh, this huge circumflex. Then uh, we advanced the, the two uh, balloon for kissing balloon inflation, 375 for LAD and 35 for circumflex, so appropriately sized. Then we performed the sequential dilation individually to check expansion of the two uh, balloons. And then we ended up with a kissing balloon inflation uh, with simultaneous inflation. Then we performed the repeat POT with the same balloon, 5 by 12 at high atmospheres. This was the uh, fantastic uh, result we achieved. Since we had the uh, OCT image, imaging device open, uh, we also checked the result. And we have been able to see by three-dimensional reconstruction on the upper panel, you may see that uh, the coverage on metallic coverage of the left main and the LED is very appropriate. And uh, there is a huge opening of uh, the uh, circumflex with no stand struts uh, floating on. And uh, also into the cross section, you may see that our stent was able to reach more than five uh, millimeters of diameter, which is what is the appropriate treatment for this large vessel. So uh, I think that uh, this uh, is yeah, a very great, good example. Yeah, great case, which really documents uh, operator profit, but also advancements in technology. So we need both. We need operator skill, and we really need to have technological advancements and to have devices which could really expand up to 5.5, in order to really completely oppose in these large branches. A great example. Thank you, Francesco. Yes, so it was very, uh, I think that is very important to have a correct stepwise uh, way of managing this kind of patients. To enter the cat lab with many dubs is not advisable. We should have several technical options, but we should confirm the fact that anatomy is suitable for one of these options. And then we should check step by step. I think that the improvement in provisional we did uh, uh, during these uh, years was really something that optimized provisional, making it very suitable for the majority of patients. 
But uh, let's remember that provisional is a philosophy that is open up to the implantation of a second stent if needed. So if you follow all the rules, uh, often uh, to implant a stent, uh, like uh, in a circumflex uh, I showed before, at the end, if you are not satisfied with this fantastic result, you have residual stenosis and what you want to fix, we have uh, several technical options, you showed it. And it is very important. Provisional is not single stand. It's appropriate treatment starting from a single stand. Thank you very much. Great case. Thank you, Francesco. So I think we may uh, uh, acknowledge all the people that uh, helped us. And uh, we are happy to be here at uh, PCR sharing our experience with you. Thank you. Thank you.